Hello viewers, welcome back to our session. In this session, we will discuss about important terminology which we are using in contracts and tender. So, so in this session, we will discuss about EMD, Earnest Money Deposit, SD, Security Deposit, Retention Money, Liquidated Damage and unliquidated damage, revocation of tenders, vouchers, abstracts, agreement, inventory and in the last one is tender fee. So let us start with the EMD, earnest money deposit. This is generally 1 to 2 percentage of the total amount of the cost. So if we talk about the technical definition, the earnest money deposit is an insurance or guarantee in the form of case on the part of the contractor to keep open the offer and confirm his intention to take up the work accepted in his favor for the execution as per the terms and condition in the tender process. So this is the amount which is given by the contractor to the client 1 or 2 percentage of the total cost of the project that shows that contractor wants to do that work. He is giving the insurance by the paying this value and he wants to part of this process and he wants to do that project willingness. So this is the guarantee or assurance is given by the contractor to the client. So this amount is a check. So that the contractor may not refuse the accept the work or run away when his tender is accepted. If the failure to pay EMD by the contractor when the opening of the tender, if the missing of the amount of the value EMD, so there will be rejected of that tender from the tender process. So there is essential to continue of the tender process that is required the EMD earnest money deposit. And in case of the contractor refused to take up the work, his earnest money is forfeited. For example, after the filling of the code of the contractor and the after the evolution of the tender process the client is offering and selecting that contractor so contractor has to do that work because his code because his tender is accepted by the owner if contractor is not want to do that work after the accepting by the client, so the EMD will be forfeited by the client side. And EMD of the tenderer whose tender is not accepted are generally refundable. For example, the client is offering the particular project and the or the contractor will quote the rent and the after the selecting the particular type of contractor, so the other contractor will get back the EMD value from the client side. So this is the refundable for the other contractor. And the selected contractor's EMD will be converted into the security deposit because there will be freeze of the EMD of this selected contractor and this EMD value of selected contractor will be converted into the security deposit and we already discussed about the there is 1 to 2 percentage of the total cost of the project for the EMD 
earnest money deposit now let us discuss about security deposit it is generally 10 percentage of the total amount of the work this amount is taken by the contractor as a security because if contractor will not do that work based on the terms and conditions if contractor will not follow these specifications and the drawings and the terms and conditions which has been mentioned in the contract so the client may not refund that security deposit to the contractor so this is the security amount after the fulfill the terms and conditions had been completed work by the contractor so after that the security deposit will be refunded to the selected contractor so this amount is kept as a check so that contractor fulfill all terms and conditions of the contract and the carry out the work satisfactory according to the specification and maintain the progress of work complete the work within the time so this is the one of the important point we have to consider if contractor will follow terms and conditions and will complete that work with the specification drawings and others criteria but contractor will not do that work within the time duration so in that case there is a delay of the work so the, that case there will not be refunded the security deposit to the contractor so contractors fail to fulfill the terms and conditions of the contract the whole or part of the security deposit is forfeited by the department it is the decision from the client side how much security deposit will be forfeited so there may be part of the total amount there may be total security deposit amount it's dependent upon the client's decision and if contractor is completed that work with terms and condition with specification with drawing and with within the time duration so security deposit is refunded to the contractor after the satisfactory completion to the contractor usually after the one rainy season or six months of the completion of the work now let us discuss about retention money whenever any claims for the payment of sum of money arises out of the under the contract against the contractor the engineer in charge is entailed to withhold the sum or sum sums in whole in the part from the security deposit till the finalization or the adjustment of any such claims for example you are a client and I am contractor and I am doing your project work. For example, this is the G plus 3 building and I have completed first floor and second floor and now I am going to start third floor of concreting work and plaster work. But you are freezing the amount of the second floor of the concreting work and plaster work and this freezing amount you will release after the certain duration or at the end of the project without any reason so this is the retention money by the owner now let us discuss about liquidated damage and then we will discuss about unliquidated damage it is the amount of compensation payable to contractor to the owner or government due to the delay in construction work. For example, contractor is delay the project work. So there may be damage to the owner. Owner or client may be private or government. For example, government bodies declare the particular work, for example, road and building department or any irrigation work department. So, the, if contractor is delay that work, so contractor is liable to 
give the compensation to that body. But for example, client is from the private sector, so in that case, the contractor has to liable to give the compensation to that owner. For example, you are owner from the private sector and you want to construct the factory and as per your plan after the certain duration for example after the two years you will start your factory so if for example i am contractor and i am dealing that work so there may be delay of your opening of the project there may be delay of the manufacturing in your factory side there may be delay of the profit from your business so this compensation is liable to give to owner by the contractor side but as per the mention in the contract and this type of the damage has no relation with a real damage and the payment of such damage shall not relieve the con contractor from the his obligations and liabilities under the contract for example i am a contractor and i am delay of your construction work but if the compensation payment by me to owner means after the payment of the compensation contractor has to do that work contractor cannot relieve from his responsibility compensation is mandatory but the obligations and liability is also mandatory in that work so contractor has to complete his work with the compensation and if we talk about the other scenario if the before the construction of the work any part of the work is occupied by the owner if owner is failure to hand over the site to the contractor totally so the liquidated damage for the delay shall be reduced proportion in which the value of the part is the used for example out of the 100 percentage 50 percentage occupied by the owner and 50 percentage owner hand over to contractor to do that work and contractor is getting delay of, to complete that project work but in that case owner already occupied and he is failure to hand over the total site to the contractor so contractor is not liable to give the total liquidated damage so in that case the proportional damage has to give by contractor now let us discuss about unliquidated damage this is the simple this is known as the ordinary damage having the relation with the actual damage by the contractor now let us discuss about revocation of tender for example after the filling of tender and before its acceptance by the owner the contractor comes to know his mistake or instance of withdrawal from the work the contractor is free to do so so this is known as the revocation of tender for example any contractor fills the quotes to for the participate of the tender process but before the accepting of that work contractor can revoke of his bid he has rights that he can any contractor can revoke from the tender process as per the section 4 and 5 from the indian contract act contractor can revoke that it means stay back from the tender process but after the accepting the tender he cannot revoke from this bidding process contractor can freely rework from the bidding process before the accepting his project his tender if once the tender is accepted he cannot rework so there will be freeze of the emd now let us discuss about vouchers 
the term vouchers is used to mean a legal receipt with the details as a proof against the payment made and is kept as a record this is the one type of the receipt or record for the payment and next one is abstract work abstract is monthly account of the all the transaction related work in respect to case related to the stock related to the other charges so the all the transactions record can be made in the abstract next one is agreement we already know different between the agreement and contract contract is enforced by the law but agreement is not compulsory enforced by the law agreement can be done by the orally and this is not generally in the written so then agreement usually is informal between the two or more parties that is not enforced by law and it is the mutual acceptance by both parties in all it is not always in written form now let us discuss about inventory a simple list of items such as the property goods in stock or the contents of building and last one is tender fee this is the main important tender fee is to reduce the competition of contract because tender fee is around 2000 to 5000 rupees so in that case in the bidding process for the time pass or the small contractor who is not capable to do that work he cannot participate in the bidding process if the contractor wants to be part of the bidding process willingness and wants to do that work so in that case the, he will give the tender fee for the participant in the bidding process and the tender fee is also collected as a part of the service charge for the display of the notice inviting tender and the other process which client provides in the form of the drawings and the specifications and the other printed documents for the filling the tender so this is the one type of the charge is collected from the contractors and and the second reason is to reduce the competition from the contractor who is not capable to do that work and who is doing time pass for the for being a participant in bidding process so the tender fee is collected from the contractor side so these all are the important terminology after this session you may clear about the all the terminology of contracts thank you